Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining our last program of the year. Thank you for coming to our last program of the year. We're super excited to have this health and wellness series continue. Um, sorry that the projector is kind of off, but we're going to introduce our speaker. Our speaker is Dr. Yen Yen. Also known as Yen. Also known as Yen. Um, a little bit loud, spoken, but it's not spoken virtually with us. So, Dr. Yen, Yen is Menhao, is a pharmacist, he's a traditional Chinese herbal medicine herbal. I don't know. I don't know if it's because of Zoom. I'm not, I don't know what's going on. And he's the coordinator for the Herbal Information Center at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. He and I actually went to the University of Buffalo together, and then he went on to do an ambulatory care PGY1 pharmacy residency. Then he went on to work um, in a community pharmacy setting, and then in Elmhurst Hospital as an ED pharmacist. He also then uh, chose to do his training at the New York College of Traditional Chinese Medicine, or NYTECCOM, and holds a doctor a doctorate program. Um, and he's here to talk about the foundations of Chinese traditional medicine. So Jason, I'm going to turn to you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jamie, for inviting me. Uh, so we will be going over um, some foundation of traditional Chinese medicine, TCM. Um, tonight we'll be going over a few objectives. We'll first uh, review the origin and history of TCM. We'll discuss the body system and balance and uh, imbalance, which, which is the pathophysiology. Uh, the different treatment methodologies using herbs and acupuncture and others and as well as going over some monitoring and precautions. Uh, throughout the talk, I will be discussing a case where uh, we will um, evaluate how to treat and um, choose different uh, modalities. Um, so uh, with the origin and history, we really wanna speak, uh, talk about two, uh, almost legendary and mythical uh, emperors. Uh, first is Huangdi. Huangdi is the yellow emperor. He's the first emperor who reigned over Middle Kingdom, which is uh, modern day China, um, back in uh, 26 or 27,000, uh, 2700 uh, BC. So he is the first emperor and um, we are basic, the Chinese are basically the descendants of uh, yellow emperor, um, hence my color of the skin. He basically um, within his palace has a medical doctor and they would have conversations regarding life, health, and basically um, how to uh, achieve longevity. And we basically have a, um, a scripture that was basically a conversation between the emperor and Qi Bo. So when I went to school, you know, when we're studying the Yellow Emperor classic of, um, classic of medicine, uh, Huang Di Nei Jin, uh, it's really a question of what would uh, Qi Bo say. So um, Huang Di Nei Jin is basically a collection of the conversation that uh, Huang Di, the Yellow Emperor, had with Qi Bo and other, um, other medical doctors. And they would talk about um, how to uh, live our proper or a well-balanced lifestyle. 
and it's broken into two chapter, uh, two parts, two big parts, with each part having 81 chapters. Uh, the first part is called Su Wun, or basic questions, where uh, it talks about the theoretical foundations of traditional Chinese medicine, as well as diagnostic method. And within this, uh, uh, this 81 chapter, the first portion of the Huang Di Nei Jin, uh, they basically um, talk about, um, maybe you have heard of this, but uh, the superior doctor prevents disease. The mediocre doctor attends to impending disease. And uh, it's the inferior doctor that treats the full-blown diseases. So within the first portion of the doctrine or the, 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 um, the scripture, they really talk about how to prevent diseases and try to have, live a healthy lifestyle. Uh, and it's the second uh, latter portion, which is called Lin Su, uh, the spiritual pivot, also contain 81 uh, chapter, where within this, po uh, this po portion, they discuss mostly the uh, acupuncture and the uh, theory in details. And this is where all these different uh, ancient depiction of the meridians and channels, as well as the acupuncture points that uh, we'll touch on later. The second um, emperor, the mythical emperor, would be Sen Long. And he is credited for uh, the practice of agriculture and the use of herbal, herbal medicines uh, and the application of uh, plant-based medicine. Um, the legend holds that Sen Long had a transparent belly so he could see the effect of different plants and herbs on himself and had uh, identified hundreds and, um, of medical and poisonous herbs by personally test tasting their herbs uh, and their property. So you always see uh, Sen Long depicted having you know, an herb that he'll be tasting and, you know, um, and within, uh, and, and later, down in, uh, in Han Dynasty, which is around 25 to 200 AD, uh, there's a, uh, a scripture called Sinong Ben Cao Jin, or the Divine Farmer's Classic of Material Medica, where it um, uh, written down in the scripture, the, the herbs. Um, they're broken into three big sections. Um, uh, also named as the upper or top shelf, middle and lower shelf herbs, okay? So the upper shelf herb, um, the top shelf herbs, the first, first um, herb that they talk about uh, is Linzhi. Linzhi is uh, uh, also known as reishi mushrooms, okay? And uh, along within the top shelf are also uh, Zhenshen and Huangqi or Jinxing and Astragalus. So while they, while they top shelf, they supposedly do not have uh, a lot of toxicity. Uh, one can actually take a lot of it and uh, would actually benefit uh, from it. And it goes as far as uh, increasing lifespan and increase the longevity. Uh, and um, so, that's why those uh, specific herbs were written down and still used today as one of the major herbs where we try to tonify or boost our energy. So we'll begin with our first, um, well, we're, we're gonna follow through this case study throughout the lecture uh, seminar. Uh, we have a 28 year old male who had a pancreatic cancer metastasis to um, liver, uh, lung, and uh, peritoneum. Uh, start a conversation about goals of care for his pain and palliative symptoms. Um, in March this year, uh, ascites developed 
and uh, he had to get regular SID drains, uh, 500 BID through a catheter. Other symptoms include bloating after each meal, nausea, indigestion, and diarrhea. Okay. So the next topic we're gonna go over uh, is uh, the body system and the balance. Here uh, in the picture depicts the uh, ever famous yin and yang, and it's actually um, a Taoist concept uh, where uh, you know, there's the two fish that um, circle each other, and um, there's basically and they basically represent the uh, basic concept of TCM, um, where the fundamental differences are in principle in diagnosis and treatment approach. Basically, are different between the Western and the Chinese medicine. Uh, the ancient Chinese believe that their existence was closely tied with the universe, where they were located in the center with the heavens above uh, and then the earth position below. Uh, and the concept of the universe was used to explain the laws of nature and the relationship uh, forms uh, between the cosmos and the human. And it's the world is in a harmonious and holistic entity, and no single being or form can exist unless it was seen in a relation to its surrounding environment. So, furthermore, uh, we speak of uh, in language of qi or vital energy, blood, and body fluids that we view as the uh, material basis for various body functions. And they flow through, through the body uh, to facilitate all part of uh, the body to work together in a, uni in a unified and harmonious uh, body. Um, they basically can be broken down into five elements and we have a theory called five element theory, where the five major organs in our body is represented by each one of these colors. And um, the elements that they're referring to can be seen as uh, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. Okay, so they are in, um, in a supporting um, where one generates the next. And you can see how wood can generate fire. The fire can generate earth. The earth can generate metal. And then the metal can generate water. And then water is generates the wood, okay? And there are inter controlling each other. So one doesn't overpower another. So let's say, for a very good example, wood would control the earth, earth would control the water, and then water would control the fire, uh, fire can control the metal, and then metal can control wood, okay? So uh, it's the balance of these five elements that basically um, give a person um, the wholeness and health. And it's with the imbalance of any of these elements and um, or like sometimes the emotions um, which associates with a certain, certain element can basically uh, over control another. Uh, so for example, like uh, just before this uh, talk, you know, there's this anxiety. So this anxiety uh, and um, um, feeling is really the wood energy. So it typically would attack the spleen or the stomach energy or the earth energy. So, you know, you get that sense of um, anxiety and then the butter, uh, butterfly in the stomach feeling. That's how um, 
the energy is imbalanced and we explain it through that way. So uh, each person has a unique combination of these elements and one can predominate and one have energy that can pretty much uh, be the cause of the pathogen. We also have this uh, clock where energy flows into the next, where um, we really want to uh, emphasize on uh, when people should go to bed and when people should wake up. And there's this natural uh, flow of energy. Um, so this can be translated into the Western world uh, through the circadian rhythm where you know, melatonin typically is being released um, at 9 p.m. And then uh, when you wake up, um, melatonin stops and cortisol spikes where um, this cycle uh, would, would um, basically goes in circles. And um, any disruption to this cycle can lead to problems um, if one's constitution is weak or um, through aging or uh, it's no longer able to rebalance. Um, so we, we really want uh, people to go to bed before, uh, before 10, before 10 p.m. And that's because the energy and the blood really has to go back to the liver uh, where it gets nourished. And uh, so when, when you wake up the next day, you have better energy and ready to go for the day. Okay, so this uh, this would um, this would this would um, basically um, come to this slide with the infamous twelve meridian channels, where uh, energy flows through all twelve channels that represent the um, the the different uh, time, and uh, it just goes. Uh, along the limbs, and back to the torso and down to the legs and back up to the torso and uh, out to the limbs again. So it just, uh, it just wraps into, um, so there's three on the front, three on the back on the arm, and then three in the front of the leg. And um, usually if you go to a, a Chinese doctor, you know, they'll, they'll tell you where which energy points are blocked or somehow need to be um, 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 unbound through specific uh, modalities. And uh, that's why um, through, through TCM, we try to find where the imbalance is and try to use uh, met different methods to try to get the energy flowing. And as for pathophysiology, there's the internals and the externals. So with the internals, we're talking about the seven emotions uh, where you know, overly anxious, overly stressed, it would really uh, attack the, um, the liver or the wood energy. And that's pretty much the modern day disease where um, once the liver is, uh, you know, um, being uh, subjected to these uh, emotions, it can uh, basically uh, generate an imbalance in the entire system. Um, and the external, external pathogens or uh, factors would be um, the six evils. And they are broken down into wind, um, summer heat, damp, dryness, fire, and cold, okay? These are pretty much um, a concept that um, is very different from the Western world, but um, there's a connection to, uh, you know, the Western world through this particular book, uh, the Sanford uh, Guide. So who, who here in the audience uh, recognize the Chinese characters. I'm not sure who, um, but the Chinese character do not literally translate to Sanford guide, unfortunately. It's actually a uh, heat disease. 
okay? So this heat disease is talking about the fire, okay? The fire uh, external pathogens, okay? And what, why is it called fire? Because when you contract this evil, you'll develop inflammation and uh, develop fever. And um, it's basically, uh, now we come to know it's the potentially uh, um, due to the bacteria at play, okay? So um, Sanford guy really uh, used this uh, heat disease as a reference to the traditional uh, Chinese medicines uh, external pathogen um, uh, concept, okay? And um, there's this um, book uh, back in the 16th century um, called Wun Bin Lun, where they talk about the uh, epi epidemics, okay? Where different um, pathogen can go through different levels, okay? Um, where it starts with the really superficial level all the way down to the blood level. And back, back in uh, 16th century, they, they knew about sepsis, you know? So, and then another treaty uh, called the Treaty of Cold Damage Disease by Dr. Zhang Zhongjin, this, this is guy. Dr. Zhang um, uh, lived in uh, 12, uh, 208 uh, AD. And he already talked about the different uh, pathogens and uh, use herbs to try to relieve uh, the different uh, levels of uh, infection. So how do we come to diagnose people when we do not have x-rays and tests and labs? Um, if you go to a traditional Chinese doctor, the good ones, not the fake ones, would really um, do four things, okay? Uh, and those are the diagnostic tools, which is observation, auscultation, inquiry, and palpitation. So uh, through these four methods, they're able to uh, uh, acquire a pattern or imbalance in, in, one, uh, in the patient. Um, they're basically going to feel for the uh, radio pulse, where each They'll, they'll use three fingers because there's different, uh, different organ representation for, for, for the left, part, left hand and the right hand, um, as well as uh, telling you to stick out your tongue and they'll take a look. And basically, um, there's regions on the tongue that represent the different elements and the organs associated with um, the, the five element theory. And everyone's tongue is different and the presentation is gonna tell the practitioner what's, what's out of balance, okay? So in the center is typically the, the, the GI issue, uh, and then the sides are usually the liver, the wood energy, and then the tip is usually the, um, the, the heart, with, where like uh, usually the in, insomnia patient would, would become really like red and They'll, comp they'll, they'll complain of uh, irritability. So this comes to the TCM concept of uh, eight principles, okay? Um, which uh, really kind of assesses the uh, depth of disease, nature of disease, um, whether it's uh, access or deficient, okay? And then um, the overall characteristics. So imagine this campfire with a pot um, when you go camping. This can represent a human where the pot represents a vessel where, where our human is basically a bag of water, okay? Within the vessel, it has um, like our blood and chi and, um, and uh, it has to have a certain amount okay, to sustain life. But if you overconsume it through like vigorous work or just um, uh, use, basically using up your reserve, um, uh, the vessel would just be empty without uh, any uh, fluids to, um, 
to basically maintain the balance. Uh, and if you have like uh, fires represented as life, you know, and if you keep ha having this fire burning an uh, empty vessel, this vessel would basically be uh, overheated. Um, uh, and we would, uh, this is typical of a um, elderly with potentially hot flash, okay? So they basically have this uh, depletion of the reserve, what we call indeficiency. And then, uh, and then the fire keep burning where the vessel becomes hot. So there, there goes the hot flash. So that's how we explain the imbalance of these uh, life force and uh, blood and body fluids. And people can have different combination of, of those uh, eight, um, eight uh, principles. And uh, it's the practitioner's job to identify the different patterns and um, have a treatment principle to try to get to the roots of the pattern. And um, if you go to different doctors, they may have different treatment principles, but hopefully they found the roots and treat the pattern for the, for the um, disease. Um, so um, uh, so it's, it's, it may be, if, if it's like textbook, um, pattern, then everyone would basically have the same treatment principle. But if you are a little complex, then depending on the uh, practitioner's experience, and they, they might choose a different uh, treatment principle, okay? So what are some treatment modalities? So uh, methodologies. Here, we probably recognize this face, uh, Kim, Kim Kardashian having mm -hmm. Uh, facial acupuncture, and on the right we have the Rock, uh, Dwayne Johnson having cupping done on the back. Okay, so what are these strange-looking things? Um, so we'll start with uh, uh, acupuncture and moxibustion. Uh, in Chinese, it's zhenjiu. Uh, they come hand in hand. They basically is the manipulation of a uh, uh, small, really fine needle on a specific acupuncture point where manipulation of the needle as well as heat application is used, okay? Um, back then we don't have like heat lamps or whatnot, but they have um, very, and they just grow everywhere, uh, mark boards or uh, ai ye. Um, they would basically cultivate these and then, um, and then make it into this, instant like stick where they burn on uh, on the acupuncture points or potentially just leave it on the uh, the, the the needle itself where uh, the heat can transfer into the specific uh, energy point where it can uh, promote the movement okay so why mark what and uh, study has shown that when they burn this uh, plant it really gives off the a very specific frequency of um, uh, heat, where it's not overpowering, where uh, blisters gonna form, or uh, too too low of a heat where uh, the patient don't feel anything. So there's a lot of uh, study looking into Makwa as a Maxa stick. Okay, and this is the first one. So when do you use acupuncture? So there are specific uh, pressure points along the different, the 12 meridian channels, okay? Each one has its own purpose. And for the most ubiquit ubiquitous use of a uh, pressure point is the uh, PC6 or neck one, or if, if you use like three fingers up, um, uh, up on the um, wrist line, uh, and in, in between the tendons, there's a anti-nausea point, okay? And this anti-nausea point, um, there's very smart uh, uh, entrepreneurs out there that basically use um, 
like a, a band where it has a little beat where uh, people who can, uh, before go to go on a C, they can basically uh, wear this C band and tell them to massage this acupuncture point. And there's a lot of uh, literatures on how this can uh, elicit anti-nausea properties, okay? So these are also, uh, these are the size comparison of the acupuncture needles. They usually come in uh, individually packed sterile uh, packaging. Uh, and there's other ways to stimulate um, uh, acupuncture points, especially the years, years. And they use these uh, either magnetic or metal uh, balls where uh, you can stick on the ear, specific points on the ear and I kind of help, uh, help uh, like even uh, sedate the appetite and uh, help uh, lose weight, okay? So um, basically they use different uh, method to try to stimulate the acupuncture points, okay? So uh, uh, same, same patient uh, on October, he went to see an acupuncturist. The chief complaint is nausea, bloating, and indigestion, okay? So the bloating and nausea persisted. Um, and here you see the acupuncturist list out the tongue and the pulse, and then uh, even the organ, the pattern um, that the, the doctor see it's a little deficient. Okay, and um, with uh, within the protocol, you'll see this PC six being applied, where you know the same acupuncture point for C band is used uh, instead of the C band, they use the acupuncture point. Um, here they don't, uh, they use a therapeutic lamp because in a hospital we're not allowed to burn these uh, uh, Maxa sticks. Um, so we use a heat lamp um, and then there's no E, e stem, uh, which uh, usually E stem are uh, a replacement for uh, hand manipulations. Um, uh, so, um, and other, Modality include cupping. So these are like the ever famous um, uh, um, um, cupping that you probably seen. Um, and uh, there's two type. There's the one that uh, uses a mechanical suction and the fire cupping. Okay, so the fire basically can uh, uh, expand the air inside the cup and once it cools, it rapidly creates a vacuum and does the same purpose. So if you're not skilled enough to do the fire cupping, um, uh, the practitioner would really try to use the mechanical one. Uh, so when and why cupping? So you'll see probably from the 2008, I think, um, it really was um, popularized by Michael Phelps where you know, he come out um, with these uh, circle marks on his body <laughs> where uh, we don't know, uh, um, people start asking what, what is this that, uh, that uh, um, it doesn't look like a tattoo, you know, um, why, why is he using these type of uh, methods? So uh, cupping really helps relief and also help uh, get the blood circulation going. Through the suction and uh, um, um, the cupping, um, it creates a, a micro um, circulation under, right underneath the skin where um, uh, it allows, allows the flow of uh, blood more quickly underneath that specific spot, okay? And why do different area have different colors, okay? So we say when there's darker color, it means more stagnation or more pooling and um, um, clotting of the blood. And that means uh, while through, through the mechanical method, there's, uh, there's a, they try to increase the blood flow. And if there's really a stagnation there, um, the, the bruising occurs, okay? But it'll dissipate, okay? Um, 
you know, dissipate and with places along the body where there's not, uh, not much stagnation, the mark would be a little lighter where the, the blood just flows right through. There's no pooling, there's just, uh, just excellent blood flow over there. And it really uses our uh, blood and chi to, re to really uh, regulate and bring the energy back to balance. There's qigong and tai chi, uh, which is energy work. And also tui na or, or Chinese massage and gua sa and reflexology where specific points on areas on the hand and foot can really stimulate the different energy and, uh, and, and these organs represent the five elements. So there's, um, there's also those methods. Guasa really got popularized, especially where, you know, um, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the beauty industry, industry where they use these special um, uh, uh, plates where they could just scrape along skin to get also promote the energy and the blood flow. And, and it comes to, uh, we'll, we'll talk about the TCM herbal formula, okay? So uh, typically you'll see a uh, Chinese herbalist with uh, a, a very rudimentary uh, scale uh, with weigh on one end and then a cup on the other where they can weigh and uh, measure out the dosages of each herb. Uh, the herb, the raw herbs, would be stored in cabinets like this behind this guy, uh, where um, he'll basically remember the the cabinet and just you know open the drawer and know which one to get you know, um, and then uh, it's by apprenticeship where um, the master would teach the student. And in um, in in two thousand nineteen, the January edition. National Geographic actually wrote a book on, uh, wrote a, a piece on uh, traditional Chinese medicine. So uh, typically um, when, when you see a doctor and when they figure out your um, uh, pattern, okay, they'll, they'll give you a bunch of herbs, okay? And some of these herbs have particular um, um, uh, put the properties and uh, for this one, this is uh, the formula for a famous cold remedy, especially if you have sore throat. Okay, and it's broken down. Um, there's about like 12, 12 herbs, and it's broken down into like uh, a chief herb, where and then a minister herb and assistant herb, where these assistant herb would help and assist the chief herb in its actions. And um, more, uh, in, in these two, two herbs, uh, basically it has antibacteria and antipyretic properties. Um, uh, with, with our modern technology, we, we found out um, um, there's some scientific basis to why uh, the, the ancient practitioners you choose these herbs to be the chief herb in relieving sore throat and cold okay they would be cooked in a kettle and either uh you drink the whole very bitter tea or nowadays uh they're being uh encapsulated or put in a cup pouch and in, into like granules where you would have to reconstitute and tell them to drink the whole thing. Okay, so each herb has its own uh, nature uh, or properties. Where uh, we saw, you know, sore throat is having a heat pathogen, and we use a cooling herb, uh, which are uh, forsythia and honeysuckle, to try to cool down and rebalance, rebalance the body. But if you overdose or overtake these very cooling herb, you'll swing the other way where uh, you, you become, you feel this stomach ache and diarrhea, okay? So we use the opposite temperature to try to treat the patient. So on um, uh, the following week, uh, the patient came and saw me, well, the herbalist. Um, so 
he says by going to the acupuncture, there's 65% bloating and after the acupuncture, 5% is left, but still feel the, the pressure building back up. And um, so he tried massage, uh, probiotic without much resolution. Um, so uh, other complaints include no appetite and uh, feeling really thirsty. So thirsty is a sign of heat. Okay. And then, um, um, and then also the pain, the pain start to build up as, uh, as the, as the gap, gas build up. So he was given Baohe one and um, it's in capsule forms. Okay. Three times a day, right before meal. So Baohe one is uh, the chief herb is this uh, Chinese hawthorn fruit, Sanza, okay, where it's assisted by these other um, herbs where it helps uh, stimulate the appetite as well as uh, gastric motility, as well as uh, increasing the, um, the digestion, okay? Lian uh, Qiao for Cynthia, this is the same herb that's in the Yin Qiao San, um, the one for the cold and sore throat. Um, this one is to decrease the heat that's building up because uh, basically nothing is moving, gas is, uh, gas is building up, and we try to use more of this um, uh, gastric motility, uh, increasing the appetite uh, to help relieve the gas. So what do we do uh, as, as a pharmacist um, reviewing the chart? Uh, I definitely would have to look into herb drug interaction, Sansa or Chinese Hawthorne is known to have uh, to increase the effect of digoxin. So luckily the patient is not taking digoxin. Uh, there's no herbal allergy that the patient has. Um, um, Sanja um, is one thing, but there's also barley. Barley has gluten. So uh, if patient is gluten allergy, they shouldn't be taking this herb. So, um, and then I definitely would check for the quality of the herb. And since um, I, I, each one of these herbal supplements, you would have to check for the certificate of analysis that they're the right drug, uh, right herb with the right uh, components. Okay. Um, and patient actually take six capsules. So um, that's more thing for the patient to actually digest. So um, once he broken the capsule and emptied the content into the hot water and drink that instead of taking the capsule itself, he felt much better. Uh, specifically, no pain anymore. So, and that's uh, really increase in the quality of life. So um, when when other considerations, uh, even though there's no ginseng, uh, who, who here knows about um, potentially um, the wild American ginseng going e extinct? So we really want to be mindful of the ut utilization of these herbs, where um, not just the quality, but the existence of these specific species we have to conserve. And um, so um, um, that's one big topic that uh, is for another day. Uh, so we'll go into different references and resources. Um, why, what's this uh, got, got to do with pharmacists uh, and the medic, medical doctors in, in the hospitals? Um, TCM is actually being included in the new ICD-11, chapter 26. So if you wanna check out um, what's, um, what's included in that chapter, um, uh, it, it can really be part of the integrative uh, practice, pra uh, practice of um, Western and Eastern uh, medicine, okay? You can always check out the NCCOM website. Um, and, uh, and, we, and if you want to know further about the different mer meridian channels and the points, that they represent, um, I would re really recommend the web of uh, that has no weaver by Ted uh, Kacha. Uh, he has a TED talk that you can also review. 
Um, there's clinical studies to really assess the safety and efficacy of uh, acupuncture as well as herbs. So, um, um, and some are pretty, uh, pretty much um, really, uh, it opens doors for, for uh, the use of these specific herbs in uh, different uh, 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 medical diagnosis. Um, so how can you find reputable practitioners? Um, you really wanna make sure that they are, uh, they're licensed and usually you can check um, their license through, um, you know, the Office of Profession online. Um, and they went through specific trainings from different schools, uh, TCM schools across the nation. Um, you can actually find the practitioner through this uh, directory provided by the NCCRN. And then uh, and definitely avoid uh, the practitioner that appears on the FDA warning letters, okay? Um, and then specific about the herb and supplements, you really wanna have check uh, the quality assurance. Um, there's one website that I like to um, introduce and that is the consumerlab.com uh, website where um, they are a third party uh, testing lab where they really assess uh, what is um, the content uh, and measure against its, uh, the, the manufacturer's label and make sure that they match and not misrepresent the labeling. Um, and then uh, about our website, uh, as well as the free app, um, you can check out on, on um, the MSK website with um, by herb drug interaction related information. And that's it. How are we doing on time? Three minutes left, left for questions. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, great. Hi, everyone. Thank you <laughs> for your presentation, Jason. Thank you so much. Um, our first question is, for cupping sessions, how long is it recommended to leave the cups on? So each session should be around seven to 10 minutes, no longer, okay? Um, it's unsafe to leave it for too long. And uh, you'll see different um, blisters or like, uh, clotting, uh, forming, where um, it can get infected and whatnot. So it's not like the more pressure and the longer, the better. It's just to get the energy and the blood flow. Good question. Thank you, Jason. Another question is, are there any sites where you should avoid cupping? Yes, so um, we, we definitely don't want to uh, cup the navel. There's, uh, and then, um, Usually the navel, the face, uh, we, we try to not to uh, avoid bruising over there. <laughs> uh, that's also uh, prone for um, potential lawsuits. <laughs> <laughs> um, another question is, do any insurances cover TCM appointments? What? Do any insurances, like medical insurances, cover TCM appointments? All right, so this is a, um, a question that's for the insurance company, but more and more are covering acupuncture, okay? As it's being listed under the um, ICD-11, um, acupuncture are being accepted more and more, and as more clinical studies and uh, safety and efficacy studies comes out, uh, more and more of the insurance would cover acupuncture. As far as herbals and supplement goes, uh, it's, it's still out of pocket until we have further evidence on safety and efficacy. And once that happens, um, 
uh, I think insurance would be likely to pay for those instead of like the, the very have, um, expensive medications. Thank you. Another question is, in one of the earlier slides, honor yes. was listed at the top of the red fire zone. Yeah. And they're asking why that is. Is it considered an emotion or another word? So are we referring to, let's see. Are we referring to here? So these are different emotions that uh, consider underneath these um, um, organs and, 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 and the, uh, the elements. So joy, honor, sadness, impatience are related to um, um, this element and any overjoy or dishonor would really a uh, harmless uh, organ, uh, which represent the heart, okay? So um, that's what it means. And we categorize all these emotions, uh, organs to all these different elements. And uh, we can associate different patterns uh, and imbalance of these energies uh, through, through explaining how, how some of these are being um, imbalanced. Thank you, that's great. Another question is, um, what are some reasons why someone would get facial acupuncture? So um, people like to, so we want to increase the blood flow to, um, to the face, okay? Uh, in order to, you know, uh, re rejuvenate, okay? Um, acupuncture is one way where we can stimulate specific point on the face to really promote the circulation. Um, there's other ways like guasa where you mechanically really scrape uh, the, 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 uh, the blood and the body fluids over there to kind of get the, get the energy flowing over there. So um, facial guasa and facial uh, needling is now like a trend, uh, better, sometimes better or more, uh, more, um, cheaper than Botox treatments. But, um, uh, this one is more like trying to get the blood flowing to the region and allow the, the body's own way of, um, relieving the toxin and, and allow rejuvenation that way. Good question. Thank you. And there's also a request to go over your last slide. Yeah. Thank you. This slide? I think so. I think it's your, oh yeah, then this is your reference slide about herbs. This slide? I think so. So, um, so there's ways to find out who is qualified to practice TCM. Okay. First is through proper training. Okay. And then um, there's also, you know, whether you should go to a school clinic or a community clinic, um, they're both good. School clinic, you're pretty much gonna have students uh, do the acupuncture on you, but they're supervised. Uh, community pra practice, you would have to rely on you trying to find the, the uh, well reputable uh, practitioner uh, who kind of um, did their courses and passed the exam, the national exam through NCCAOM, okay? Um, there's a lot of these integrative and holistic practice out in the clinic and they're, they're buzzwords. So you, you gotta be careful what, what exactly do they entail, you know? So um, there are specific um, um, uh, modality that were allowed 
to 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 do within different states. So um, you can really look into their verification and what they are allowed to do as scope of practice. And as far as supplement and uh, and and herbal formula, we really wanna ask the patient to be. Uh, ready to ask the, the the practitioner for a certificate of analysis. Basically, all manufacturers are supposed to give that to the the buyer, the the the, the supplier. Uh, the supplier have to give that to the buyer uh, or the practitioner. A uh, 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 readout of you know the HPLC analysis and the chemical analysis of these drugs, and most importantly, are free of pesticides and heavy metals. So those are the biggest critique. Uh, when taking uh, herbal uh, supplements, where you know it can it can cause more harm than than does good uh, if if those quality control are not being screened. Thank you, Jason. Another yep. question is: To what extent is traditional Chinese medicine supported by RCT? Is there a growing body of evidence? Yes. Yes. So that's why I list out all these. There's so many, okay? But these are the, uh, some are from MSK where we really wanna see if um, um, instead of opiates, uh, acupuncturists, um, see if that's, that can be um, like first line to help with uh, relieving pain. And we're, we're really looking into uh, these uh, melanoma and lymphoma patient, right? melanoma patient and lymphoma patients. Um, this is a multi-center trial. Um, we have, um, so from, from this, um, from the National Geographic, the 2019 version, January, they talk about a specific herbal, um, herbal formula where uh, it, um, if this goes well, you know, it really will open doors. Um, this helps this herbal formula, also called Huang Qing Tang, four herbs, can help really uh, relieve the um, GI issues, uh, especially when they're taking chemo, okay? Uh, and they're looking into liver cancer patients. Um, just recently, they're looking into Chinese herbal formulas for COVID-19 because there's no other, I mean, uh, Pfizer just came out with uh, a drug, but uh, before that, um, we're trying to see um, using Chinese herbs to try uh, relieve uh, relieve the symptoms of uh, COVID nineteen, and um, they're they're currently um, uh, looking into this. So more and more of these uh, RCTs are are uh, coming out to really assess uh, safety as well as efficacy and. Not everyone is, um, um, you know, ready to use these um, uh, herbs and acupuncture. And we gotta find out which population would really benefit from, from you know, acupuncture and herbs and uh, who we should really uh, stay clear of and try to avoid these modalities and use other modalities to treat uh, uh, certain populations. So, and then the dosage, like, uh, like how long do you keep the cup on? That's the dosage, right? Um, you know, so we have to really find out specific length of time or, or like uh, um, amount of herbs and um, duration, some, um, you know, something in regards to that, to really find out what dosage for what disease and uh, for how long. Another question is, in the school you trained at and are currently teaching in, um, are you all trained the same way? Like, this is a combination of different healthcare professionals being trained in the class. The one I went with, um, there's basic training on Western, Western, um, Western medicine, but um, I actually had to come in with uh, Western background in order to really uh, fuse the two. So right now at the TCM school, they really teach the foundation, the origin, the different modalities, body works, 
acupuncture herbs. And um, they're, once they're licensed, they're allowed to do just that. Um, but we're trying to teach um, um, or at least give them the concept of you know, herb drug interaction, what to look for, breathing, uh, you know, sip enzyme interactions, uh, stuff like that um, in, in the classes um, that is taught in the school. And a follow up, like, can pharmacists prescribe herbs or? Not yet. I'll fight for you guys, but right. not yet. <laughs> awesome job. Promoting prevention. Because I was wondering, yeah, is it restricted to like physicians? Right now it is. But as a licensed acupuncture in New York State, just a licensed acupuncture, you don't even need to be herbal certified. You're allowed to recommend as part of your acupuncture treatment. Uh, these food and supplement herbs. So they're allowed to prescribe as acupuncturists. But it's funny how, I guess as a pharmacist, we can recommend um, uh, you know, the vitamins and minerals. Uh, back in Flushing, when I used to work um, as an independent, uh, like an independent pharmacy uh, pharmacist, you know, they would come and ask for herbal medicine. And all I can do is point to a shelf and go, go knock yourself out, you know? And I did that for nine months. So that's when I really went back and learned about the whole system uh, to, to provide a better service for, for the, for the uh, patients I serve. Thank you. Uh, the last question here. Um, okay. Um, for those reflexology massages, like the foot yeah. or full body, how long are the benefits like after someone loses massage? How long is what? Are oh, the benefits of massages? Well, typically, uh, massage and acupuncture, they really want you to have at least six sessions before um, any, um, I mean, people may act, react differently, but at least you stick with it for six sessions before they really have, you see a benefit or like a responder. But if you just go one session, it's not enough to really um, get the energy flowing, I, I would say. And uh, usually a TCM doctor would recommend lifestyle changes. So if you have a um, um, specific, specific like pose or like a, um, habitual, um, you know, exercise where you know it's basically giving you an imbalance um, by having specific manipulation done as well as trying to avoid certain uh, movements uh, in a daily life um, it can really um, rebalance you as a whole so it doesn't really just treat treat the specific area it can they they supposed to tell you like okay what kind of lifestyle changes that you can adopt or try to stick uh, stay away from in order to really get uh, re relief the root of the problem. Thank you. And is there a specific time we should wait between each session, like the foot massage or the full body? Everyone's different, but the recommend typical re recommendation is once a week, um, uh, once a week for six weeks. Awesome. Thank you so much. I think all of our questions have been answered. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jason. This was an incredible program. We're so glad to wrap up the end of the year with you presenting and <laughs> you take back a lot from alternative medicine, traditional medicine. So really huge thank you and thank you so much for coming out with us tonight. Um, I like to give out the CE codes tonight. So the CE code for pharmacists is origin, O-R-I-G-I-N, origin. And the C code for pharmacy technicians is treatments, plural, T-R-E-A-T-M-E-N-T-S, treatments. Thank you so much. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you, Jason. Take care. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Happy holidays. <laughs>